So these videos are the most important videos that I do on this channel. If you've been sent here and you're watching this video now, you've been sent the video from somebody who cares about you quite a bit. The person who sent you this video is very heavily invested in crypto and they are struggling ultimately to explain to you why they are so excited. So I've taken on the responsibility to take 20 minutes of your time so that you can better understand your, your partner, your spouse, your husband, whoever it is. And remember, I'm coming from a perspective who, who has a wife who doesn't necessarily like listening to me talk about crypto. And bear in mind, it's my job, right? I talk about crypto every single day and I've explained crypto, and, and I'm not even joking here, over 8 million times on YouTube. My videos have been watched 8 million times and millions more on other different platforms, right? So I've communicated this to many people. I'd like to think I'm versed in explaining why I'm excited and why your spouse or husband is excited about this as well. So in the next 15 to 20 minutes, I'm gonna explain everything that they're excited about. There's a few updates since the last time I did this video, so there'll be extra knowledge and information that we now have that we didn't then, that will give you a, a, a fuller picture. And maybe when you see them getting excited about crypto, maybe you can look at it from a, a different perspective now, understanding that they want you to know about this because it's ultimately gonna be changing the course of your future. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, I believe that that time is coming with all my confidence. It's taken all of my investment, all of my time. It's now my job. Like I'm heavily invested in this space. I've got 100% conviction that this is all gonna, gonna work out. But it's important that we're all on the same page because there are stresses that come with this space, the, the stresses of the market, the price is going up and down. People have invested lots of their savings, right, into this space. And so sometimes it can be a real downer when the market is down and your, your husband or whoever sent this to you might be a bit more emotional with the, with the rises and falls. And it's good to know, have this context and understanding of why even in the bad times, they, they stay convicted and they stay in it. And that's what I hope to explain in here. And of course, all of my videos, I want to be very accessible. So if you have your own YouTube account, or, or Twitter account, please hit follow or subscribe and you can watch the videos as they come out. So I think the first thing is we need to give a background on what money is. Ultimately, throughout time, money has changed form. In the early, early days, the, the currency or the, the money was basically, I provide you this service, you provide me this service. And that was kind of a, a trade of skills. As the world got bigger, they started to use things as currency to say this represents X amount of value. You know, you could have put together a whole series of glass beads, which were actually a thing that glass beads were used as currency at one point. And you could say, okay, 400 glass beads equals a cow <laughs> or something, you know, that's how currency works. As time has gone on, that currency has changed and it's adapted. It's gone from, you know, trading services to glass beads, to gold, to silver. And now what we found ourselves in after 1972-ish, they changed money from being something that was denoted in gold, so backed by gold, to something that's not backed by anything but itself. And this is the fascination of the, the world finance system right now, is that money doesn't really exist, it means nothing. The US basically look at the paper and say, this dollar is worth a dollar because I said so. <laughs> and it's so, so it's a really weird system that we've got right now. But what you'll notice is over time, you'll change from glass beads to gold, you'll change from gold to paper cash. Do you think it's unreasonable to assume that that will change again? This is where we are. This is where we stand right now. This is why we're excited. We're in the transition period from moving away from paper money into digital currency. Now, the leader of digital currency, the absolute leader that, I mean, it's inevitable, absolutely inevitable, 100% this is happening, is blockchain or crypto-based currency. That is what's coming. So obviously that in and of itself, being part of this switchover presents everyone that you know who's involved in this, especially the person who sent you this, presents them with an opportunity to be in a wealth transfer. Wealth transfers don't happen very often. I mean, when was the last time you heard of someone transacting in gold, right? That was a long time, that was out of your, our time basically. Our time, we were mostly transacting in paper cash even though if you're old enough, it was backed by gold. It was, you never really have used gold to transact. So 
that happened a while ago, the last change. The new change is coming, it's right here. So we're moving into digital currencies and blockchain. At every time when the currency has changed, there has been a financial system transition. Wealth has been made, that these are called the, the wealth transfers of the world. So if you look ultra granular, for example, we look at the internet boom of the 2000s, that was in, in and of itself a wealth transfer. If you were savvy to what was going on with the internet or you saw the potential of the internet, you made a lot of money in that wealth transfer. If you saw the internet and got scared by it and didn't really pay attention and you were kind of behind on it, the internet just happened, right? There was no financial change that happened in your life, right? But those who made lots of money, the likes of Facebook and people who were invested in companies like Facebook and Microsoft and Apple, they made lots of money because they knew what was coming. This again is exactly what's happening here. With all the research that we're doing on this channel and that the person who sent you this video is doing, they understand what's coming. And so you can see why that's extremely exciting. And so when you look at digital assets and crypto in general, there's so many different areas. I think people block them all into these, into a category of maybe even like the bigger banks. One of the narratives that they push out here, which is massively disingenuous, by the way, they say that crypto is a scam and it's dangerous. And so the typical public, which I'll put you into that position, even though you might not be, but someone who doesn't really know much about digital assets or crypto is that you follow what the banks say, right? The banks say it's a scam. You think it's a scam and you think it's all a scam. But what's really unknown to the majority of people is that digital assets and cryptocurrencies go into so many different categories because they try to solve different problems. Now, the problem that we focus on here on this channel is payments and the banking system. We could go into healthcare, we could go into data, like there's so many different areas of it. Just imagine all the areas that exist right now in the world that will also exist in the blockchain. Where we focus on is payments and banking. And the hypothesis behind that is that the financial system is going to change, right? We've talked about that earlier. So if you're thinking about the people that make money in this new world, or at least who makes the money first, it's probably those who are in money. The money makes money first, and then it trickles down to everyone else. And by the end of it, usually if you're a person who doesn't know this stuff, you would typically be so far down the river of this wealth transfer that you would see no change in your financial situation. And in this case, we can imagine if you're not aware of this stuff, it's probably gonna affect you negatively, right? So think of all of this as almost like a, 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 a knowledge debt, so an ignorance debt. It is costing you probably hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to not know this stuff. If you know this stuff, you're granting yourself access to the wealth transfer. If you don't know the stuff, your, your unwillingness to learn about it is costing you millions of dollars. Try to look at it like that. It's a debt that you pay to the world for your lack of understanding. It's all out there for everyone to learn. If you can learn it and understand it, you know, you pay yourself, that pays you. It, your knowledge pays you over time. Because we're fo focusing on payments here, Let's talk about the payment system and how payments work and we'll get into like why the solution we're excited about is so good, right? So in the payment system, when you take your money to the bank, typically the average person believes that the bank take your money, they put it in a vault, even though you've probably never given cash to the bank, especially in the last like five years, but the bank take that money and you think it's gone in a vault and it's safe. Like my money is there, I can look at my banking app, my, the number is right there, it's great. It's, I've got my money, it's held in the bank, it's great. I'm even earning 0.01% interest, winning, <laughs> right? And obviously you know, as, as time goes on, you learn that inflation goes up consistently year on year. So just having your money in the bank is eating up at the spending power of that money. The money gets weaker the longer it's in the bank. Do you think the banks know that? Of course they do. They know that as soon as you put money in their bank, if they keep it there, it's gonna lose power. The bank don't want the money to lose power. So what they do is in the background, without telling you, is they take your money and they invest it themselves. Now we know some of the most profitable businesses in the world are banks, right? Why are they, why are they profitable? It's because they are the ones buying the properties that you get a mortgage on. 
whose money are they using to buy your properties? Your money. <laughs> it's crazy. Not just your money. Every person you know in the world, they're taking their money and investing it for themselves, giving you a 0.01% interest and paying themselves whatever the return on the investment is, right? Think about your mortgage. Let's say it's a $500,000 mortgage. Over the course of paying off that mortgage, you're probably going to pay 800000 right? Let's just say it's 800000 Over the course of that mortgage, they've made $300,000 from you with your money, even when inflation has eaten it up for the last 30 years. They're using money properly. That's how you're supposed to use money with the current system. So we, understanding the payment system, now want to start acting like the banks, right? We when, when we get our money, we don't want it in the bank. We want it invested. We want it diversified like the banks do. And we want to be ahead of the technology for this wealth transfer as well. So that's how the banking system works. But the inefficiency in the banking system through and through, the absolute worst thing that banks do, not to you, but the worst thing about their process is something called cross-border payments. Now, cross-border payments are really bad, especially if you're in America, right? If you're in America, you try to send a, a payment to someone in France, for example, it's gonna take five days, right? And it's gonna cost a lot of money. It's gonna cost a lot, the bank a lot of money. If there's any information in that payment that is like incorrect or faulty, there's errors along the way. Like when, when has anyone ever had a good cross-border payment experience? If you use Western Union, like these companies are the ones that are trying to solve the problem by being the middleman to all of that. But sending it yourself, a cross-border payment yourself is awful. It's like the worst thing ever. And the banks know that. And one of the problems that banks have with cross-border payments is something called Nostro Vostro accounts. Nostro Vostro accounts are basically ours and yours. And essentially what these banks have to do, if you want to send money to India, for example, you send your dollars, right? You use your dollars in your bank account. You send it to an Indian bank account. That's typically what people think of. Like, that's it. Somehow that person in India has just received dollars. That's not, that's not the case. That's not what happens in the background. And this is where you start to see the inefficiencies when you understand how it actually works. So you give your dollars to the bank, the bank take your dollars and they have essentially, because rupees is the currency in India, they have a bunch of rupees like held in their own account, right? They hold all of these rupees in their account and they send the rupees to the destination bank, so the recipient's bank, right? And so in order to make payments across border, and we're not talking about really payments like between me and you in different countries, we're talking about bank sending vast amounts of money to a country like a central bank like if we want to send a trillion dollars to russia the bank needs to hold a trillion dollars worth of rubles in order to send that money to to russia so essentially what you can call these big vast buckets of currencies that banks hold is called liquidity we call it liquidity just because you know cash that's readily available and we can use it to make these transactions. It's not like store, it's kind of stored money, but it's readily available, which makes it a word called liquid. So what happens is if you are making lots of transactions in rubles, for example, or rupees, whatever it is, whatever country you're sending to, what happens when you dry up of that currency? What happens if you don't have that currency anymore? You all of a sudden cannot make payments to that country. Let's put it out there like this. You need to send a billion dollars to Russia, but you've got no rubles? Problem, right? That is a problem in the banking system. We saw a couple of banks a few uh, months ago. We didn't see this in the last video. This is why this is important. We saw this a few months ago where three banks just collapsed because they had liquidity problems, right? They just ran out. They just couldn't facilitate payments anymore. And so the anticipation is, is that at some point during this wealth transfer, the banks are gonna spiral down due to lack of liquidity. And a solution to that problem is required. Now, the smarty ones, smarty pants among you, I'm going to ask you here, what do you think would solve that problem? You don't have liquidity. That's the problem. No liquidity. Um, and it's, it's expensive and it's slow. Right? It takes, takes, costs a lot of money and it takes three to five days. So the problem is here, we've got liquidity and speed. Those are pretty much the two, the two problems, right? So we need to fix those two things. Now, this is where the change of the financial system comes in. 
because if we are changing into a blockchain environment with CBDCs, digital currencies, and, and digital assets, which we are, like that's a foregone conclusion. I'm, there's no speculation in what I'm saying there. Um, they are coming and it's happening. The chances are there will be a blockchain solution or a cryptocurrency solution for liquidity and time, right? Well, there is. <laughs> that's literally what we're excited about because there is really only one, maybe two assets within this very niche area of cross-border payments that can actually fix this problem. The fix in our, in our minds and based on all the research, the hundreds, thousands of hours that I've done, it comes down to XRP. Now you probably hear XRP and you're like, oh, XRP again. I keep hearing about XRP all the time. XRP is the solution. Now let's talk about why XRP is a solution and the surrounding kind of information around XRP and, and where we think it's all going. And hopefully all of this will add to your understanding of why we're so excited, right? So XRP, the token, is its own cryptocurrency. It's not Bitcoin, it's not Ethereum, like these are ones that you hear being talked about all the time. It's not a scam, it's a legitimate financial technology company that has built XRP and the blockchain that XRP kind of works on top of is the XRP ledger. I don't necessarily think I need to go much deeper into it. I will explain what a ledger is though, because that might help things. So if you're playing a game of Monopoly, for example, and this is essentially what a blockchain is as well. Um, you play the game of Monopoly, you go around, you're paying rents and some people are paying rents to you. You're buying, you're you know, acquiring squares and all of that stuff. At some point down the line, if somebody said, wait, you didn't, like six goes ago, you didn't pay me $200 when I passed go. And the banker said, yeah, I did. I paid you $200. When you pass go, I paid you $200. Without writing it all down, without writing every single transaction down, you have no idea. You have no, no way to verify. Because in, in Monopoly, you don't have receipts, right? You have no way to verify that you were paid that money when you passed go. So what a ledger is, is essentially a book where you write down every transaction. Now, when you look at a blockchain, for example, imagine each one of those pages of that book are linked together in order. So you have the first transaction ever, second, third, fourth, fifth, you get onto the next page, seventh, eighth, ninth, you know, it continues on like that. So the blockchain is a series of blocks of transaction data chained together in order. And so the blockchain that XRP runs on, so all the transactions that happen using XRP, are logged on the XRP ledger. Now the XRP token is made specifically for banks to do institutional size payments, you know, billions, trillions of dollars, while removing the requirement for the banks to have liquidity, right? So remember we talked about Nostro Vostro accounts where banks have to hold vast amounts of different currencies to have the liquidity to make these payments. Think about that sentence that I just said, right? You understood that sentence. Before this video, you very well may have never even talked about banking before, and now you've just heard that sentence and you get it, right? It's also very exciting to get something. Like, I get it, I get how banking works. It sounds hella boring, <laughs> but that's very, very exciting, especially like we're getting into the, the depth of how these technologies work and you being a newcomer actually get it. Like you understood that sentence and I'm proud of you. So XRP comes along and XRP the token is able to be used as a bridge currency. A bridge currency removes the requirement for liquidity. And here's how it works. Essentially what Ripple, the company who have made XRP, have kind of pushed forward is the concept of having a pool of liquidity, a whole load of XRP tokens in the middle of every transaction. What this means is if, you want to, if I want to send money from the UK to India, I take my pounds, my pounds are converted into the cryptocurrency XRP, and then the XRP that has just been put in there converts itself into rupees, right? So all of a sudden, all a bank needs is XRP. It doesn't need loads of different currencies. It needs XRP, and that's the only thing it needs. And the great thing about XRP is that you can convert XRP into any asset. So let's think, okay, this coaster, right? I've got coasters, nice coaster. I could essentially have the coaster, the whatever it is, 
on the blockchain. That's a whole other topic, but just conceptually, I could have I could have my rupees, and I could put my rupees in the in the pool, and the the XRP is converted into uh, coasters, <laughs> like coaster stock. If that's a company, you can just get stock in that in that company. It could be anything. It could be grains, metals, window companies, whatever it is. Like it doesn't matter. You can convert your XRP into that into that uh, company or or asset. So it's very versatile. And of course, you don't need the liquidity in all the different currencies to do that transaction. So what we've got is liquidity sorted, we're fixed. Liquidity's done, XRP has the liquidity function within it. The other thing was speed, right? And the great thing about XRP and, and the way that they transmit transactions and the way they can kind of settle these transactions is that it takes not three to five days like the normal system it takes three to five seconds and actually leans more towards the three second side so for all intents and purposes this technology is almost like instant payments globally and it's a fraction of the price the the, the cost is almost like you don't even pay attention it's that small it's pennies you know you can send millions billions trillions of dollars on the xrp ledger and the fee you still wouldn't even care about the fee at that point you know so it it meets the requirement for for speed it happens in three to five days it removes liquidity on top of that you know how the whole agenda for the world right now is going to net zero and having green technology it's extremely green it's like net zero or has gives you carbon credits whatever it is that's one of the leading things that Ripple use in their marketing to say, this is a green product. Like this is gonna be part of the new system. And so XRP is basically set to take over all of the payments from an institutional side, not from like me to you. Uh, that was, those were just examples to understand, but just like me and you send payments to each other, banks send payments to each other as well. And so settling large values of payments consistently, cheaply, quickly, um, without friction is, is a high priority, right? So really important thing. Now that's all exciting because we understand how payments work. That's one element that's exciting. The other thing is, is the true understanding that Ripple and XRP are technologies that are going to be used. And let me explain that. In order to explain that, we're gonna have to go back into the payments world. So what most people don't know is that when you send a payment, there are two different things that happen. There's the first layer that happens, which is a message. That message in a payment between me and you would go from my bank to your bank to tell your bank how much I'm sending from my bank, right? And so once that message has been received, your bank would say, thank you very much, uh, send the money now. And then the money is actually moved. So there's, it's a two phased thing. The money doesn't just go like without any information. It goes after the information. You will acknowledge that the information transferred or the message that is sent from my bank to your bank would be pretty important, right? Because I would need to send information like my name, my bank, my sort code, my account number, my information needs to be verified by your bank so it can accept the, the payment, right? And so information is a really important thing. Now what's happened very recently is there has been a new standard for the way these messages are sent. This is called ISO 20022. That's the most boring name I've ever heard, but it's made by the International Standards Organization and they have formatted these messages in such a way to provide more information and also to include information about payments sent via a blockchain. This is a super key piece of information in all of this because previously messages bank to bank never included blockchain information. Now it includes information not only about blockchain, but it also provides instructions for the payment to go into a blockchain, take a token from the blockchain and give it to the bank. That is mind blowing. That is one of the confirmations that we have to say that the blockchain technology is coming. The banks are adapting their messaging to allow for blockchain transactions integrating with the old system. So the old and the new coming together and being integrated. With that said, that standard, the ISO 20022 standard, is being epitomized in the way Ripple work, the company that we're talking about, and XRP. XRP is ISO 20022 compliant. It's able to be sent using those messages, right? 
Remember, this is a traditional system payment messaging thing. XRP is already compliant. Now, it's not just XRP. It's a whole load of other assets that, that we in this community actually call ISO coins because they are all the set of tokens that are ready to make that switch into the into that, that mi migration into the old system. It's my belief that for the most part, for the most part, I can't guarantee any of this, but for the most part, the most likely digital assets or cryptocurrencies that are going to remain after this financial transition are the ones that comply with the old standards, right? I don't think that's an outrageous assumption. I think that's very reasonable. We've got the old standards for messaging and payments. If the tokens in the new system also have that, they can integrate with the old system very well. And these are the ones that are going to be treated more seriously, right? And honestly, at this level with the ISO 20022 standard, there are only six or seven or eight assets that, that match that criteria, right? So out of the 4,000 digital assets, we have pretty strong conviction in six or seven that are going to take it to the next stage, the next level, be part of that wealth transfer. When you look at crypto and blockchain in general, from the outside perspective, it looks like a dart throw, close your eyes, there's 4,000 tokens there, you're just going to throw the dart and wherever it lands, that's the one that I'm going to buy. Hopefully I get lucky. This is going a little bit further than being lucky. This is like, actually, I've been training darts with my eyes open every day. I've been excited about darts, been training, practicing every day for two, three, four years, right? Because that's the person who sent you here. They've been doing that. And now I've got an opportunity to throw a dart at a dartboard with all that practice, with all that research and understanding, how much more likely are you going to be to hit a good one? Way more likely. And that's the situation we're in, right? We're not gambling here. It's, it's a space that's been viewed by the banks, which, as you'll know, is outrageous for the banks to be saying that crypto is a scam, considering they are already starting to utilize crypto. That's another one of those eye-opening moments for you there. The bank don't have your best interests at heart, right? They don't want you involved in this stuff because they need to be first. So you're learning, you're learning. I'm, su I'm super proud of you. And I know this has been a long video, but it's really important for you to understand where they're coming from. And I hope I'm explaining this well. Now, because XRP has been in such demand, right? For, for the banks, it solves all the problems. Inevitably, some people have some things to say about it. And not individuals, really. Really, there's not many individuals that have anything to say about XRP because it's clear, it works, like it's really good. But there is an entity that didn't like it. And that was the entity called the SEC. That's the Securities Exchange Commission. And that's based in America, it's in New York. So it's only, their only jurisdiction is in the United States. But they said to Ripple, we are suing you because we believe that you have sold XRP as a security. Now we don't need to get into what a security is and, and all of that, it's, it's really mind numbing. But the last time we did this video, that court case that had been going on for two years was not resolved, right? It was uncertainty, the SEC obviously have been doing illegal things, corruption, all the, all the whole thing. Like I'll explain it at some point in like a movie or something because this stuff is going to be a movie one day. But essentially, they were saying that XRP was a security, and if XRP was deemed a security, it would basically be viewed by the public as inaccessible. The SEC would say, you can't buy XRP anymore because it's security, and it would have been chaos in the crypto market. I don't think ultimately that would have changed the destination for XRP, but regardless, that court case has now finished, and XRP was deemed not a security, so the SEC lost that court case, and it was monumental for, for XRP. And what that means now, and this is fascinating, is that XRP, the, the thing we've been talking about this whole video, is the only cryptocurrency, digital asset, that has regulatory clarity in America. The only one. Not Bitcoin, not Ethereum, not any of the other 4,000 cryptos. Only XRP. So when we talk about the dartboard, this is not closing your eyes and throwing it at the dartboard, hoping you hit one good. This is, I imagine the whole dartboard is just XRP. And as long as you hit the dartboard, you, you, like, you can't miss. We're, we're making our decisions very calculated here. 
We understand how payments work. We understand the solution to the problems in payments. We also acknowledge that the world is moving towards blockchain. We also acknowledge that the SEC trying all, all that they might to bring XRP down were unable to, meaning XRP is the only digital asset with clarity. Like it's, it's not ridiculous to believe that XRP is gonna be there as one of those wealth transfer assets. And it's in knowing all of that, that makes us so excited, right? I hope that maybe like you watching this, you had some like butterflies in your stomach because this is game changer. What we have discovered and what we're excited about, what we invest all of our time, money, <laughs> and, and all of our effort into, like all of our emotion is locked into this because we understand that when this wealth transfer happens, we're going to be part of it. Like if we think about what that means for you, that could mean either at, at, at least you know, a good chunk of change that you've you've made from this transition because some people don't have lots of it but are very excited. But then there's also like the very easy to get into the category of this is life changing, right? And so if you if you went to your your partner, the person who sent you here, and you said, I found something that could change our lives. That that should be exciting just from the get-go, <laughs> right? They have been unable to communicate their excitement with you, especially in the depth that I'm going into here. And they can go into this depth as well. They know all of this stuff, right? They're very smart people. The only difference between them and me is that I'm an outside entity, like you don't know me necessarily, but I've also explained this to millions of people. Over and over again, it's my job. Like I can articulate things perhaps better than they can, and, and I hope that has actually helped. So the current price of one XRP is about 50 cents. Okay, the all-time high, the, the highest it's ever been was $3.84.83, and that was a few years ago. Now in crypto, what happens is this, right? What happens is that it goes up and the price goes up and down. Every time it goes up in a kind of like this four-year cycle, it will go up higher than it did before. That's typically it all goes up and down, but generally up and to the right, which means the price goes up over time, right? Now, where we find ourselves right now is at the bottom of that curve, right? So we've had the peak, that was the $3.84, the price comes down for a prolonged period of time. We're down here. The ultimate time to be involved in digital assets, especially XRP, is when the price is down. That's very simple. Everyone understands that. You, you buy low and you sell higher up. Um, the great thing is, is that we're in that bear market. It's called a bear market when you're down in the price. But additionally, we have the prospect with XRP of the, of the transition of wealth. Actually, a transition of the way money works. So this isn't something that we're looking at coming, you know, up and down, up and down for the foreseeable future. The up and down movements are based on human greed and fear. That applies to what we call speculation assets, because people are speculating, I hope I get rich from this type of thing. What we're doing is slightly different because when XRP is utilized by the banks and it's being used the way it's supposed to be used, it's no longer in a speculation framework. It's not speculation anymore. It's actually something that we call in this space utility. And when utility rolls around, it means we're not subject to the fluctuations that we've seen in the past. In other words, what we have is banks using XRP the way it's supposed to be used consistently over time, meaning that price doesn't really come down the same way anymore. The price continues to go up as banks continue to adopt XRP. And banks will adopt XRP continually, whereas the speculation market will go up and down continually. And we're not looking at the same thing. In addition, the possibilities with the most precious asset in the world being these digital assets that we hold present so many more opportunities in the future for passive income, you know, not needing to work anymore and using your assets to earn you money in different capacities, paying for rental properties with your digital assets, borrowing or getting loans against your digital assets so you can buy cash flowing assets to pay your lifestyle without letting go of any of your digital assets. This is the real excitement. Right? This is the real excitement for, for whoever sent this to you. Because yes, the price appreciation over time, there's price predictions everywhere from $8, bearing in mind we're at 50 cents, all the way from $8, people go all the way up to $50,000. Like the, 
the the range of price prediction here is is crazy and really could potentially be very life-changing for, for many people but the point is it's not just about the price appreciation of the assets it's also about what you're able to do with the assets to pay your lifestyle passively and not need to work a day in your life ever again not that people will just stop working because we all need to keep our minds busy especially people in your life right because these are people who want to do research they've done research they're smart individuals and so the the big priority for me in my business right now is getting people up to speed like i am with you here but also allowing for a place for people to be to understand how to use the money when it comes in because we're we are not rich people right we try we understand that we found an asset that will potentially make us rich but when we're rich what do we do then right and so i'm i'm really focusing on what do we do now situations and i i hope that resonates with you because of everything we've talked about in this video having the plan afterwards and knowing what to do with it is really really important so um that's exactly why i've got this mastermind that i'm creating it's like helping people with that next phase, even though we're not there yet. It's good to know, it's good to have your team assembled and know who you need to contact, the accountants you need, the law, the lawyers you need, all that kind of stuff. You know, that's launching soon. That that whole program is gonna be very cheap every month. It's gonna be like a monthly thing. Um, it's gonna be very cheap. If you're interested in having that as an investment, you know, it really is just, just a, I mean, it's a tiny investment, but it's an investment in the idea that this, that we're gonna need to know what to do afterwards. So whether that comes out of your family budget or whatever, your support in this with the person who sent you to this video is really important. Like, I really hope that you understand what they see is happening here. And I hope you see it now as well. And any moves that are made in this space by your significant other is done because of what they see happening and they wanna change everyone's lives, right? they only looking out for the for the good um they're very smart people they're they're waiting for that transition of wealth um and just any support that you can give emotionally just supporting like yes you can do this we can do this maybe even i want to learn more like that kind of attitude is just super helpful because we're doing it for you <laughs> right we're doing it for you and our families so i know it can be a bit much when we talk about xrp constantly and crypto this crypto that and sec and xrp <laughs> i know i know it can be frustrating it can be intense at times but i think now you've got the base understanding of why we're excited originally um but i'm gonna leave it there this has probably been a massive video i've talked for ages my voice is <laughs> my mouth is like dried up i appreciate you watching there's something i say at every at the end of every single video and it really it really applies to what's about to come and that is stay emotionless and I'll see you in the next one.